Okay, in this Unity tutorial, what we're going to do is learn how to attach wheel colliders to our game objects so that we can have a car like this here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is what we're going to have as an end result. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new, a new scene. I'll save that one. And I'm going to start off with a new scene. I'm going to have a blank scene. And I'm just going to have something to drive on. So I'm going to add a terrain. Uh, and it doesn't have to be that big. So I'm just going to set the terrain to 50 by 50 and height of 50. You know, just shrink everything down in size. And since it's 50 and 50, that means minus 25 at X and minus 25 in the Z so that the center of the terrain is the center of the screen. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just attach a texture to the terrain so we could uh, visibly see what's going on on there and there easier. Okay, there. Um, and to drive around on, in this terrain, I will just add some hills and, well, I'll just add some bumps in the background. And let's see, do 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 do, -do. around the edges, bumps make them a little bigger. Uh, just so it's a little bit more scenic for our little experiment test car. All right, now let's start to make the car. Um, so let's do that. We're going to add a cube. And the cube will have it come off in the center of the screen there. Boom. Okay. So I notice the train's a little up. Let me just move that train down a little bit from our model. Okay. All right. So back to the cube. And now let's shape this a little bit more like a car's body. So width of two, height, half, and then the length of it, uh, let's say three or even four, okay? And that's the cue, that's gonna be our body. So what we're gonna do for the car, we have to first create an empty object and I'm gonna name it my car. And then the cube, which is gonna be the body of the car, I'll put that as a child of the car, uh, the car empty object. Okay. And then I want to add some wheels. So first I'll just add them to the um, root level of the scene. And, um, you know, you could add cylinders as wheels better because they're round, but I want to show that the wheels are spinning and that they're turning. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use a cube actually for my wheels. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, narrow them down like this, all right, so that they look more like wheels instead of a cube. And the z-axis over here, that's the positive z-axis, so that's forward. I'm going to put that, this is the front wheel, that's the front, this will be the um, front left wheel, so wheel front left okay then I'll make a copy of that duplicate it and the copy I'll just move over to the other side and that's going to be my front right wheel so I'll just change the name of that then I'll select both of these wheels and duplicate them and now move the duplicates back to be my back wheels, okay? So this one's name is going to be back left. And this one's name is going to be back R, okay? Four wheels. Now back to my car object, I'm gonna add another empty game object and I'm gonna call this the visual wheels. 
okay because these are my four um, visual wheels of my car and I'm going to drag them as a child of the car and of the wheels okay there then I'm going to make another empty object uh, sorry empty object and this one is going to be well hold on instead of doing it like that all I have to do is take this and duplicate it okay and what this one's going to be these are going to be my um, wheel colliders all right and since I just made a copy of the visual wheels these wheel colliders will be in the same location and size as my visual wheels so I select the four wheels under wheel collider and I don't need the cube mesh so I remove the component I don't need the box collider I remove it and I don't need the mesh renderer I just want these four wheels here because I'm going to add wheel colliders to them so with the four of them selected I go to add wheel collider and now all four of these wheels will have a wheel collider added to them um, but they're not showing and that's because I have to have a rigid body on the car object at the root so I'm going to add a rigid body physics rigid body to my car object and I I have to increase the weight from one to something that's like the weight of a car. So I'll say 1,000 instead. Okay, and it's using gravity. Now, if I go back and highlight my wheel colliders, I should be able to see a faint circle that represents the wheels. You see these circles here? Okay. So I'll just make the circles as big as my visual wheels, you know, about. And then for my visual wheels, since the wheel colliders are the colliders for my wheels, I don't need the box colliders on my visual wheels. So I'll select my four visual wheels and on the box collider, I'll say remove component and that removes it from all four of the visual wheels. So now I've made a car that's going to use wheel colliders. So these are the rules. You kind of have to have this type of a hierarchy when you're making a car that's going to use the wheel collider. Um, I use the empty object for the car, but I added a rigid body to the root. Then I have a visual body for my car. It doesn't have to be there, but you know I want to see it. Then I have the visual wheels for my car, and their job is just to be visual. And the wheel colliders here, the four of them, their job is, this is where all the work's happening, and Unity already did a lot of the work for us. Just the fact that I have these wheel colliders here, the four of them, and they are in this hierarchy, they're going to work. So if I press play right now that I've made the car, the car should boop, just drop in place, and it drops as low as my wheel colliders are. All right? But right now I can't move the car yet. I didn't add any script to control the car. So um, I have a script right here that I created from the example that we saw before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that script and put it up at the root level object, my car. So I'll just add that to the my car. And I'll give it a max torque um, of about uh, 800 and a max steering angle of 45 and a max braking force eh, 400 okay now this is a special object in the script called axle infos and it's just to hold the information we need for for the two wheels on an axle so with two wheels on axle we have one axle two axles on this car so i'll say two okay so for the first axle, I'm going to make that one the front one. Um, I want the visual left and right wheel. So that's this and this. Okay, on my front axle. And then I also want the collider for my left and right wheel on the front axle. So right here, that will be this and this. 
and my front wheel my front wheels axles are for steering so I'll check that then on my second element I'm gonna use that for my back axle so visual left back visual left on the right collider left back and collider on the right and the back is going to be where the motor you know is turning the wheels the back wheels are the turning force all right so i set up the values for my script and now i'm going to just show you the script these are the usings they're just the um basic using statements here and this is the um, helper class that I am using to hold the axle info and you have to add system serializable so it does show in the inspector window that's why you add system serializable so I say public class axle info and this is the transform of the visual left wheel and the right wheel and then the wheel collider object of the left wheel and the right wheel and then here is the boolean check to say if it's a motor or a steering or both you know so that's the helper class then over here i have my public variables of my script which um this was the axle infos thing that was this right here which i said there's two of them and i was able to define two of them then there's the max torque then there's the max steering angle and the max brake variables Okay, so that's just this with these parts right here. I was just holding all the information I need. Okay, now in the fixed update, I'm going to do it in the fixed update because um, this is dealing with physics for the wheels. I'm going to have the controls. I'm going to read input controls, and I'm going to apply those values to the wheels to move the car. All right. So first thing I got here is about the brake, and um, First, the brake force is like there is no brake force being pressed. It's zero. But if you press the fire button on your joystick, which is like the green button, the A button, not the B, it's the A button. Or I think it's the control key on the left. That's the fire button. Then there's going to be a braking force that we're going to apply, and that's the max brake. Then over here for the wheel, for the motors, we're going to read the... Um, the vertical axis of your joystick so that's the left analog stick if you move it up or down it's going to get a value from zero and one and then it's going to multiply that by the max torque and that's going to be how much we're going to um, apply force for the motor over here and same thing for steering except steering is the horizontal axis of our left analog stick and that's going to be the um, steering that we're going to apply to the wheel colliders all right, so if you don't have a joystick for this and this, this um, get button is either going to be the joystick A button or the control keyboard, the control key on your keyboard on the left. And for the vertical and horizontal axes, these can be the arrow keys or WASD keys. They'll do the same thing. All right, so for all our axles, we have two of them. We're going to go through and see if the axle is um, has the motor flag checked. And if it has the motor flag checked, then for the wheel collider, we're going to apply that motor force to each wheel. If it's a steering um, axle wheels, then we're going to apply the steering angle to the colliders. So all the um, commands are applied to the colliders for the motor and the steering. And also to the colliders, if they're pressing a brake button, then we're going to apply the brake force to the wheel colliders. Mm -hmm. So applying those things to the wheel colliders will turn the wheels of the wheel collider, and they'll also like angle the steering of the wheels of the wheel collider. Everything's there except the visual wheels in the game. So that's what this is going to be for this function over here, is we're going to take the wheel collider's positions and apply them to our visual wheels. And to do that, that's this function right here. Just pass in the axle info. I just take um, like the collider, this for the left wheel and the right wheel, and I take the, I get the world pose, and I get the world pose of the wheel collider object, and then it's going to set the position and the rotation to these two values. 
once I got the position and the rotation of the wheel collider, then I could just apply that to my visual wheel so it matches the wheel collider. Okay, so I do that for both wheels on an axle. So um, that explains the code, and I kind of had scrolled through it slowly so you could um, copy it. So here in the program now, with the script and the car and everything, if I press play, this car should work just like we had. Okay, and now you can see why I made the wheels square. It's so that you could see that the wheels are turning when I go back and forth. And why is it jumping? I don't know. Oh, oh, wheels aren't touching anything. It's hard to turn. Uh, I pop a wheelie. So just to show you something, um, to show you what the wheel colliders are doing, I'm just going to split my screen into two views. I'm going to have the game view and I'm going to have the scene view over here. And uh, the visual wheels for a minute, I'm just going to turn them off. And I'm going to have the wheel colliders um, highlighted here. So here you can see the wheel colliders. And they're the thing that are really doing the behavior of the wheels. That's all programmed in with Visual Studio. So now if I press play, I'm going to see the two screens here together. As you can see, the car dropped down to the point where the wheels colliders were touching the ground. Okay, And if I turn to the left or the right, you can see that the wheel colliders are the ones that are getting the steering angle applied. Okay, and if I move forward or backward, you could see that it's the wheel colliders, again, that are acting everything for the wheels. The only thing the wheel colliders are missing are the visuals for the wheels. And that's why, you know, we had made these objects here. Boink, if I turn them on. So that's basically how we can use wheel colliders and make a car with them. Um, you know, you can get into a lot of settings here about the wheel collider, but that's not going to be in this video. Thanks.